Hello and welcome to my channel. In a previous video I was talking about using this uh, wireless charger for my minimalist Meshtastic node and I suddenly realized this might have an impact on one of my other hobbies which is listening to ELF transmissions in the range from maybe 50 kilohertz up to 197 kilohertz so as not to include the BBC. And do, to do that I often use this antenna, sorry about the wobbly camera, which is the uh, Wellbrook loop receiving antenna with its um, active amplifier works very nicely down at ELF as well and I found this spot in the kitchen is the best place to mount it inside the apartment so that it receives the best signals on HF on the balcony wasn't so good strangely enough plus the weatherproofing problem anyway let's put this camera back here so what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to see what effect the wireless charger has on the ELF receiving. So um, let's just have a quick look at the charger itself, the web page on Amazon. I'm still learning how to use hotkeys on OBS, hopefully that's switched. And you can see that this is the transmitter which you could just see the coil which transmits the power to the receiving antenna which is supposed to then produce up to two amps output at five volts to charge the little battery. That all works very nicely. But I was thinking, well, what frequency are they using here? So um, if we take a look on Wikipedia, you can see that this standard, which is called qi, or maybe it's qi, which is the Chinese word, which means energy, like prana in Sanskrit, um, uses a frequency of around 140 kilohertz, which is sort of in the middle of the range I like to listen to sometimes. Well, that's interesting. Um, and something else I didn't know, and I'm learning about this, uh, this wireless charging standard, actually the frequency range could be anywhere in here, um, is that the <clears throat> receiver is able to provide information back to the transmitter by resonance modulation. That is, it modulates the resonance frequency of its receiving coil, which is then noticed by the transmitter, and that's a back channel for data, so that the system can optimize itself for the best energy transfer, which, which surprised me. But there we are. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is uh, to take a look at my SDR, which is a Kiwi SDR. Oh, what happened down here? <laughs> Somebody switched something on. You see all kinds of interference or QRM down at ELF frequencies. It's currently listening at 161 kHz. Let's just see if that's working. This is a French time standard, which is the strongest one. Oh, there it is. Loud and clear. This coming from France, ALS 162. Um, Let's have a look at a more local one, 59 kilohertz. And that is probably MSF in rugby. I haven't bothered to look too closely if the frequency is still 59, although I thought it was 65, but never mind. Also, we've got at 77 kilohertz. Should be a German frequency standard. There it is, coming from Frankfurt. That buzzing, twirling thing on top of it is, is interference or something. I think it might be an old fashioned TV. Anyway. That's enough of that. Let's turn off the audio. There's always a time delay on these Kiwi SDRs coming through the local area network. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch on the wireless charger and see what happens. So in case you didn't watch the previous video, let's see if I can do this. Control Y switches to the camera. Let's have a look. Yeah, I can see myself. I'm getting used to it. So this is the transmitter for charging, this is the receiver. And when I place one on top of the other, somewhere, you won't be able to see it, but there's a little light comes on, it's inside. If I would turn on the power bank, that is. It's inside the box. And I can just about see the red light turns to a blue light. So it is indeed charging, so it's working. But let's have a look at what effect this has on the ELF receiver. So I'll go back to looking at that. <coughs> like that. Oh, you can see already <laughs> something went flying across the spectrum. So what I'm going to do, make sure the power bank's on please, is I'm going to place the Meshtastic receiver on the wireless charger that I built and see what happens on the radio spectrum. Oh, look at that. There's a carrier started at around 200 kilohertz. Looks like it's drifted all the way down to about 100. Uh -huh. 130 kilohertz. These videos are unedited, I keep saying. So sometimes I drop things. 
does it still work? Yes, it does. So we started it again. And you can see that it, oh, it's chosen a different frequency to settle at now. And now it's coming back up in steps from about 120, approaching 130 kilohertz. So this is the optimization circuit in the wireless charging, choosing the best frequency, probably, unless it's a frequency hopping charger, who knows. But it's uh, transmitting. That's my point. It's uh, actually radiating some signal, it must be quite strong, settled at about 145 kilohertz now. So that's just another source of noise in my apartment. I try to reduce the number of noise sources by replacing some switch mode power supplies with analog ones, especially Raspberry Pi power supplies, which generate quite a lot of noise. But as you can see, there's still this wireless charger, which I use from time to time. I'm going to take the, uh, the charging node off now, see what happens. And you can see, oh, it starts hunting around frequencies, looking, and then it turns itself off. So um, that's wireless charging. I've never seen that before. Anyway, let's get back to the camera, which should be here. And yes, you can see me. So um, it's just another QRM source. Noise that's not wanted, but on the other hand, it's, it's handy to be able to charge a minimalistic mesh-tastic node. So it was just a, an experiment to see how that would work out and to see the effect on the surroundings. I look forward to reading your comments and questions below. And please remember to like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos and please make suggestions about future videos that you might like to see.